Hi, hello, Internet. Um, I've been struggling a little bit because I've got this idea that I mentioned in a previous video about trying to uh, start to explain or talk about various different international organizations. But yeah, I made a list and I've started to try and think a little bit about what organizations I should talk about and in which order. I, you know, should I do it based on size, in which case do I start with the smallest or the largest, uh, largest being the UN system, uh, the United Nations, huge and complicated, or do I go by age or do I go by some other metric? The other side of it is, as I was starting to kind of look into those kinds of things, it occurred to me that there's a lot of terminology that not everybody might be familiar with. And so there comes a question, do, do you introduce all of these terms as you go? Or is there some kind of natural prelude that makes sense to, to stick on? And if so, what is it? Because it turns out there's so many different types of international organizations. It is wild. Like, for instance, you have economic collaboration organizations um, such as, um, say, EFTA that I mentioned before, ECOWAS in Africa. Uh, you, you also have these kind of more political organizations like the Council of Europe. Uh, you know, these kind of forums where they're talking about specific issues. Or you've got these kind of uh, broader, um, more kind of generic um, organizations that are kind of um, trying to do, you know, very kind of nebulous things, right? Whatever might come up. Uh, you know, that... I'm struggling to come up with an example, but but yeah, th this also exists. Then you've got the kind of the really kind of big overarching political organizations like the African Union, the European Union. Um, and of course, you also have these uh, kind of primarily security or defense related ones, such as NATO and, and the OSCE, which are in and of themselves radically different from each other. So all of this is to say, uh, I've started to try and work this out, but what I wanted to kind of bring in now is I wanted to just start to explain the concept of free trade agreements, right? Okay, you didn't know I was going to go there. A uh, uh, bit of a uh, bit of a surprise. Okay, so why do I want to talk about free trade agreements? Because um, I'm pretty certain that that's going to be the focus of a lot of these first videos that I do and free trade agreements like they sound really boring but they actually enable so much of what happens in uh, in the world right now and they're actually really interesting once you get into them um, so here's here's the basics a free trade agreement between two countries is an arrangement, or it can be between multiple countries, right? But it's an arrangement where the countries agree to have um, some kind of um, like dropping of tolls and tariffs and barriers on restrictions on trade. Typically, you're going to have the kind of first generation free trade agreements, which are focused on trade and goods. So uh, that can be anything from food to machine goods to um, you name it, any, any physical object, right? And it, some free trade agreements just drop all tariffs, tariffs being uh, fees that a government will add on top when you're importing uh, goods from, from a different country, right? So some free trade agreements just drop all of the tariffs. But others typically will will kind of pick specific tar tariff categories or uh, categories of goods and just either drop them or lower them. Uh, and that's kind of meant to facilitate or, or uh, support trade in those types of goods. Um, and so that's kind of the first generation. And uh, one thing I should 
actually note because it's it's kind of interesting. Um, so <laughs> when we're talking about categories of goods, there's a system. Uh, it's it's kind of managed by the United Nations. Uh, you can see it if you go to comtrade.un.org. That's comtrade, as in commercial trade. Uh, you can also see trade statistics of goods all over the planet. It's actually really, really interesting. But there, there's a system called the Harmonized System. And it, it's a way of giving every physical object a number, right? A class number. So, um, you know, category zero three. Uh, I think zero three is like fish products, I think, right? Uh, something like that. And then, you know, category 27 is something metals, right? Um, and, you know, you've got all these different categories and they have subcategories and sub subcategories all the way down. And it's based on those numbers that uh, tariff reductions typically happen unless they just go across the whole board. So that's kind of, yeah, the first generation of free trade agreements. Second generation uh, free trade agreements tend to also think about other things that can be traded, and especially with the um, you know existence of uh, telecommunications and such. So suddenly you can start to provide services across board. <laughs> Still a lot of fireworks here, um, but yeah, you can start doing services trades uh, across borders, and and so you know free trade and services becomes a an important thing to add, right? Um, and that can be like, you know, do you tax services that are uh, provided across borders? Uh, is there some kind of uh, work exchange programs? Are there some kind of like methods of um, making sure everybody um, that's getting services is somehow compensated correctly and, and so on, right? So you have all of that. Uh, then you have like, you know, further generations that are more going into like nuances. A lot of things about intellectual monopoly rights or intellectual property rights, as they tend to be called, where you're talking about things like, um, uh, you know, do countries respect others' uh, patents and trademarks and such. Um, and you know, you pile on. Sometimes you even add stuff like, um, you know respect from hu for human rights. It's a weird one for a free trade agreement. Some countries don't like that. Um, in particular, like uh, Switzerland is not a big fan of um, mixing human rights stuff in with trade stuff, right? Whereas other countries, uh, Norway for instance, really likes, um, you know, using trade as a way of supporting human rights, right? So anyway, free trade agreements Long story short, they're agreements, voluntary agreements between two or more countries where they agree to um, facilitate and make easier international trade. And yeah, um, and then one of the first videos we're going to talk about trading blocks. But this is already pretty long, so I'll leave it to that.